Brothers, it's a great joy to be here today to share with you the grace that it's been for me to reflect on my own story and what it is that brought me to seminary. Knowing that I would be giving this talk, I headed home this past weekend to assist at a youth conference in my diocese, which I attended four times while in high school. While I tried to figure out what I was gonna say, how I was gonna make an ordinary vocation story interesting, um, I, was, I was taken back to this place of my discernment, and the Lord reminded me of my early calling, and he showed me what I seemed to have forgotten, and this reminder that he gave me is the thread that I'm now realizing ties my entire story together. In Luke's Gospel, he recounts Christ's appearance on the road to Emmaus, and one of the most striking lines comes after Christ has left. The two men who had encountered him on the way looked to each other and say, were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way? Were not our hearts burning? He impacted them in a way that perhaps they did not realize in the moment, but as they looked back, they knew that his power, his mercy, his love, and his beauty had impacted them in a way that was beyond any doubt. When the Lord hit me with this line over the past weekend, as I listened to one of the speakers, I realized anew why I'm here. I was born into a good Catholic family, and I attended Catholic school my whole life. My brief moment of rebellion was my attendance of a Lutheran preschool. <laughs> but when I recognized the fundamental flaws in Luther's doctrine, I, trans <laughs> I transferred to Catholic school for kindergarten. and I stuck with it all the way through high school. Between school and family, I received a good base of knowledge on vocation, and my parents made it clear to me from a young age that whatever the Lord wanted in my life was what was going to make me happy, and they'd be supportive of me in that. Having this healthy root system, I began to consider the possibility of priesthood in middle school, as the reality sank in for me that my life, as each of our lives, is a gift from God, and that he wanted me to give it back to him. To middle school Brian, priesthood was the, the best way to do that. So I began in, pre in middle school, but it wasn't until high school that I really began thinking about the priesthood. In the Diocese of Lafayette, there's a high school men's fraternity called the Knights of the Holy Temple, and I very quickly got involved with the Knights. Each year, every chapter in the diocese would gather for two retreats, which were put on by the vocations director and the seminarians of the diocese. Throughout my time in high school, I attended these retreats regularly and got involved in the leadership of the Knights, which only allowed for more opportunities to learn from holy priests and inspiring seminarians. This time was incredibly formative for me because I was looking around at a world full of people who didn't know why they were here, but at the same time I was being offered the example of a group of men who not only understood their place, but heroically desired to bring others to a knowledge of this truth. Seeing the life that these men were living, I began to desire that life for myself. I wanted to live a life of purpose, heroically sacrificing for others. But I'm naturally an intense person, and soon I found myself struggling in the mindset of perfectionism and scrupulosity. I grew to know God simply as a judge, a sort of arbiter who merely saw what I did, but had no idea of my heart. And though I still sought after him, my heart began to grow heavy under the burden. Entering my senior year of high school, things began to change. My hurting heart was consoled through a wise counselor, a, father, a fatherly spiritual director, an incredible group of family and friends, and continuing growth in prayer. With time, I began to see my heart soften, and my excessive intensity lose its edge. The Lord began to show me his mercy, and I felt like I was starting to know him in a new way. I felt like I was starting to see his heart. But while I discovered his mercy, I watched those around me to continue, continue to struggle with the pain of worldly pressures and anxieties, and I longed to share what the Lord was teaching me. I didn't have things entirely figured out for myself, but the Lord was showing me a hope and a love beyond man's imagining, and I desired to spread this good news to a hurting world. I mentioned that in beginning to know the Lord's mercy, a major factor was deepening prayer. Through high school, I attended my diocese youth conference each year, and it, cent and it centers on the 40 hours devotion. And this is where I began to truly deeply encounter our Lord's Eucharistic presence. Each year, my powerful encounters of our Lord's presence in the Eucharist fed a growing prayer life, eventually leading to regular adoration my senior year and a beautiful new understanding of the power of the sacraments. As I reflect on my time in high school, which led up to my joining seminary, I'm convinced that I'm now in the right place. Why? Because like the men on the road to Emmaus, I look at the past and say, was not my heart burning within me? In the moment, each little tug felt special. It felt like something different from what the world was offering me and I followed because my heart desired what was being offered. 
But looking back, I can't deny that my heart burned. Something was, le- some- something was there leading me on. Someone was there leading me on. I saw a life of meaning in priests and seminarians. My heart burned. I saw the hope, mercy, and peace that the sacred heart of our Lord could bring to a hurting world, most especially through the cross and thus the Mass. And my heart burned. I rested with the beauty and overwhelming power of God present to me in the little white host in the monstrance. My heart burned. In all of these moments, my heart burned, and without recognizing it, I knew it. And thus I followed even in the face of fears, in the face of difficulties, and in the face of other opportunities. I thank God that he's fired my heart thus far, and I pray that in moments of dullness, I may not forget what the Lord has done for me. God willing, one day, I'll move on to serve him in his holy and heroic priesthood. Praise be Jesus Christ. Now and forever.